Do Facebook, Twitter, and other um, social media sites have a moral responsibility to monitor alternative news stories? And where, do social me uh, where does social media fall on the spectrum of protecting freedom of speech by regulating false information? So I think the assumption is that uh, if Facebook and Twitter, which are cracking down on, on fake news sources, such as removing bots, uh, which hurt my self-esteem when I see my numbers go down. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, I'm glad to be rid of them. But uh, I think we all think that when, when Facebook and Twitter does that, that uh, the people that we don't like are the ones that are going to get hurt, right? So we think, okay, well, if the government gets involved, or if Facebook gets involved, or if Twitter gets involved, and uh, maybe even set up a reporting system, that was, that was one thing, where like, if you see a news story, you can report it as fake news. And if enough people do that, then it gets flagged as fake news. Well, what would be the first thing that would happen, right? You would have massive troll campaigns to monitor and to mark as fake news legitimate news sources. Right. If it was possible to report a page enough and get it banned simply by the amount of times it gets reported, uh, my page wouldn't exist. Right. I don't post fake news, but I get reports all the time. People try to report stuff that I that I do, and uh, it has nothing to do with whether it's true or not. It's just massive, you know, disinformation campaigns. And so I would love for Facebook and Twitter to figure out a way, and there are ways of doing it that are uh, th that are better, like the you know getting rid of fake profiles because someone can, can create. Hundreds. I had I had a stalker for months. For about six months, I had a guy. All I knew is that he was from New Jersey, and he would create a new page uh, four or five times a day to comment horrible, uh, hateful, Islamic so, uh, like Islamophobic things on my page. Right? I would ban him, and he would do it again. He would create new pages because when you ban a page, it does not ban the profile associated with the page. So this guy spent six months. Like I was his full-time job. Right, like this very sad person, and it really scared me. I finally I was able to get in contact with Facebook. Uh, there was a Muslim who works at Facebook who was happy to help me out in banning his IP address. Never heard from him again, so that all worked out well. But that's what would happen, I think, if we if we opened it up to sort of uh, um, those kinds those kinds of censorship um, things. And so I'm worried that that's what would happen if we let uh, you know either the government or these corporations. However, something has to be done. And so there has to be some kind of way to uh, to do that. I think if you create a page and someone bans your page, uh, it should ban the profile. It's a very simple fix, right? That would save so much. Uh, or it should ban the address, the email address associated with the profile. So people can't do that. Um, so people can't create like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of profiles to all share the same news story and make it look a lot more popular than it is. Um, those are things that those are real concrete things that um, that, that can happen. Um, Twitter is working on ways to uh, cut down on harassment, uh, and all they've done so far is they changed with the, uh, the the avatar, so it's no longer an egg. I'm like, thank you so much. We were we were we were, we were worried about Nazis yelling stuff at us, but thank you so much for making it look look better. Um, so I'm worried that any efforts that they make to crack down on fake news will backfire on legitimate news sources and legitimate activists. Um, but clearly, something has to be done. So I guess we'll see. I don't know.